Till I got my private license, I cared about how the engines work in general, but I didn't really go into the details of priming the engine and starting the engine. If I would have any trouble, the instructor would be next to me and the instructor would help. Yeah? But after getting my license, it didn't take long until uh, on a cold day I couldn't start the engine. And then I really took the time to research and and find out how this priming topic works uh, in detail and this is what I want to share with you on this video so don't forget if you like this video smash the like button and if you want to uh, get notified when I upload more content please please subscribe okay let's get into the plane and and discuss about it yeah my name is Bruno you're watching lean to peak One topic that was very interesting for me was engine start and it was particularly more interesting when uh, I had a lot of trouble starting an engine so it was probably flooded. That got me interested in, in learning about the, the systems, learning about the engines and how it works. There's typically two kinds of uh, fuel injection in general aviation airplanes. Uh, there's the carbureted engine and there's the fuel injected uh, engine. Both have pros and cons. The fuel injection uh, is uh, more technologically more advanced and supposedly more efficient, uh, but the carbureted engine is still uh, in use. Uh, very, it, it's still very popular and it's it's very reliable also. But one issue with the carbureted engine is icing yeah because there's a low pressure area and then you can get icing um fuel injected uh engine on the other hand can have trouble with uh, hot starts so if you just stopped for 30 minutes to two hours you can have issues with with hot starts this one right here is a carbureted engine um and how it works is it basically has has a the carburetor has a like a deposit of fuel fuel gets there just with gravity uh, and then there's a buoy um, just like in your toilet yeah if you ever open the toilet to see how it works when carburetor is full or has enough fuel the buoy comes up and and it stops more fuel from coming in yeah Oh, and by the way, let me share with you a link to a video of a guy who created a transparent carburetor and this also really helped me to understand how it's, uh, how the carburetor is working. Okay, let's go back to the video. When we are starting an engine, and this one has been stopped for, for quite some time now, um, to help the engine start, we have what is called the primer. The primer is injecting fuel directly before the admission of the cylinders. So one common mistake that is done is uh, either too much primer or, um, or waiting for too long after priming the engine and trying to start it. Yeah? Uh, the problem is the idea of the primer is to, to spray fuel in the admission yeah? and, and the fuel should stay in this vaporized state yeah next to the cylinders if you wait too long it will just condensate especially when it's a uh, uh, let's say a cool day like today we are at five degrees celsius that's like 40 degrees fahrenheit more or less uh you don't wait you don't want to wait too long um otherwise the fuel will condensate and then you can have a flooded engine yeah so let's get started engine start procedure mixture full rich Primer as needed. Yeah, if the engine is cold two to five times. When it's cold, because the fuel is will condensate quicker, contrary to popular belief, and I will uh, link to a video here where this is explained very well. It's better not to prime too much. Yeah, but instead open the throttle a bit, a, a little bit more than the normal. So, I will have the throttle already few millimeters open 
brake supplied, mas master switch on. So I will turn the master switch on before the primer so that I'm completely ready. Then propeller area clear, brakes, ignition and start, okay? So let's try it. Okay, that was not enough. I'll try again priming a little bit. So in my opinion, that was a pretty good engine start for a carbureted engine with a cold start, let's say. Yeah? The fuel lines, we have to keep in mind, the fuel lines were completely dry. And uh, for me, priority is to make sure we don't flood the engine. Yeah, Because if we, if we put too much fuel in the engine and uh, the engine becomes flooded, then it will be really complicated uh, to start the engine. So now that we've seen an engine start with a carbureted engine, Let's go back into the plane and check how it works with a fuel-injected plane and this time with a special guest, yeah, my colleague Sergio. This plane is fuel-injected, which is quite different from carbureted one and that's why I brought here some, uh, some pictures. It works more like a car. It's a bit more like a car. It has, yeah, I don't know, I think probably a car only has an uh, electric fuel pump. Mm -hmm. Here you have two fuel pumps. You have electric, you have engine driven. Yeah, it's it's then feeding. So this is, let's say, pressurizing fuel. Now fuel has pressure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, let's say, pushing fuel into this fuel air controlled unit. And this fuel air controlled unit takes throttle input. Actually, this we can see it better here. So this is the throttle. Mm -hmm. It's basically just the air opening. Yeah. Uh, and let's say how open the, the throttle is goes into this fuel control unit and also the mixture so what kind of mixture uh, fuel air ratio do you want you control with the mixture and then this fuel control unit takes both these inputs and applies what they call a metered yeah here you see metered fuel pressure so it adjusts fuel pressure according to throttle and mixer mm -hmm. yeah and then this is actually we can measure it here this is also very important then to understand how this works similar to the carbureted because to start this engine what we do is we we use the electric pump mm -hmm. to already apply some some pressure and to start the the fuel injectors we will really start injecting some fuel All and right. this is what we see this fuel flow is just a, a sensor reading pressure at the fuel injectors. Even if the plane is idling, it's still exactly. pushing. Okay. Yeah, because need to, need this doesn't to... know. Yeah, this doesn't know if the engine is running or not. Mm -hmm. This is showing how much fuel is going through the injectors per hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> you see here. Um, this is the manifold. So, from the fuel control unit, you have one. Uh, let's say pipe yeah with the fuel and then it's distributed with the I think four injectors yeah one per cylinder so that's what they call manifold it's when you divide yeah something into this and then one this goes to aircraft gauge yeah it's this fuel flow it's just mm -hmm. a pressure reading actually okay yeah um, yeah so to start this engine, what we do is we have to start the electric pump. We have to um, there's uh, two different situations. One situation is the aircraft is cold. The other situation is when the aircraft is warm, like today, mm -hmm. which is actually 
that's the disadvantage of this system is that this is harder than the carbureted one because the the heat is vaporizing the 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 fuel here so the fuel should be liquid when it's going to the injectors mm -hmm. yeah but because the engine is warm sometimes you get vapor the and, fuel turns into vapor yeah mm -hmm. and then somehow it's hard to 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 push it through the injectors so there's is there's a specific then you lose fuel because it's, it's vaporizing or i think then it's just not it's harder for the the injectors to work the injectors are expecting a liquid and mm -hmm. not a vapor so then something happens i think they call it a vapor lock you even have here vapor return yeah there's a, a procedure mm -hmm. which is taking vapor out of some parts of the system at least i'm not sure if it's able to take take it out from everywhere anyway so yeah that's it i will do the procedure for a hot start it's called which which is the disadvantage actually of this system with the fuel injection the carbureted one is very easy to start when mm -hmm. it's yeah um so yeah cool so yeah one thing to me one of the most important things when starting the engine and this is was one of the issues i had in the beginning is that you should really um after we get some fuel flow here mm -hmm. there's already there's some fuel in the engine and mm -hmm. we should be as quick as possible yeah we don't need to be crazy but we should be as quick as possible because otherwise the fuel the injectors is the injectors are spraying fuel mm -hmm. like to wash the window or something yeah? yeah but if you so they should stay like this in the air like uh, um, um, sprayed vaporized they don't really vaporize i think but should they, if you wait too long then it just falls and it's not in the air anymore Mm. Yeah, it's then on the walls of the cylinders or of the intake valves and stuff like that. So you need to start burning it as soon as... Yeah, so soon as we get some fuel flow here, then what I will do is I will take the mixture off again, I will turn off the, the fuel pump and start the engine as quickly as possible. Okay. Yeah. So let me see if I don't skip any steps. The flaps are open, beacon is on, so this should be open slightly. Propellers forwards, and then electrical switch is on. So we are ready. There is no one in the area? No, not a bit is it. Very good. I will turn on the fuel pump, then mixture. We should see some fuel flow, the mixture will go off, fuel pump will, be, will go off and I will try to turn on the engine, yeah? So, fuel pump, we have fuel flow, fuel flow already, it's supposed to off, and once it starts, it didn't really work, yeah? So, We'll try again. Fuel pump. Throttle. Mixture. Mixture goes to off. Fuel pump is off. I think we can confirm that hot starts are pretty difficult with the fuel injected engine. I'm not able to say if I could have done better in this situation. So it's the typical hot starts with the, the vapor accumulated in the fuel lines. If you think I could have done better, uh, feel free to comment. Maybe uh, you spotted something that I couldn't. By the way, here's a, a link to a video from AOPA on hot starts. I think it's also an uh, interesting uh, source of knowledge. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. I hope it was helpful for you. If you liked it, don't forget to, to hit that like button. Really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.
there will be a time 